Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Edna Day. And I'm Raymond Young. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Octopus announces replacement scheme for first-generation card holders. CPPCC member Kennedy Wong and two others appear in court for corruption charges. And acclaimed Cantonese opera master Lam Ka Sing dies at 82. Two million first-generation octopus card holders could have their cards replaced with a new version, one which is compatible with mobile services. The company has assured the public that the personal data of card holders will not be leaked during the replacement exercise. Vicky Wen reports. Starting from today, people holding first-generation octopus cards can replace them with a new card, which is compatible with mobile services. For the first-generation card, uh, because this is, this, uh, they were issued quite a number of years ago, they are not able to enjoy the new mobile services using the NFC technology, the near-field communication technology. That means they cannot use their mobile phone to check their balance, and they cannot use the first-generation card to do online uh, purchases. Around 2 million octopus cards in circulation are first-generation cards which were produced before 2003. Those cards only carry an 8-digit card number and do not bear a bracketed number. The old cards cannot access various applications such as balance checking and online transactions. Holders of the first-generation cards are able to replace them with the new version for free at 10 MTR stations. If they want to have the new services, of course they can choose to replace the card using our Octopus service point. But of course if they prefer not to for the time being, for whatever reasons, they can continue to use their card. So there's no disturbance or interruption to the existing service set that they're already enjoying. Deposits, remaining balance and other key information including personal details will be transferred to the new card. The Octopus chief reassured that enough security measures are in place to prevent leakage of information. He added that the function of the old Octopus cards will be disabled immediately at the surface point and will be sent for shredding. Most Octopus card holders welcomed the replacement scheme. This woman says she will take part in the scheme and is confident that personal data will be protected because the replacement process takes place at the MTR stations. While this man said the new features should be expanded further to include more electronic payment services. The company also said it will increase the number of replacement machines to 28 by the end of this year. Vicky Wen, ATV News. A prominent local delegate to Beijing's top advisory body, Kennedy Wong, and two other men have appeared in court today. The trio were charged by the ICAC for offering an advantage to a former company director. Solicitor Kennedy Wong, who was also a delegate of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, arrived at the Eastern Court this morning. Wong is the director of Perfect Ace Investments and has been charged with two other former directors, Chu Chun Shen and Richard Yin, by the ICAC last Saturday. The ICAC alleges that in 2007, Perfect Ace Investments entered into a restructuring agreement with publicly listed Ocean Grand Chemicals Holdings. The three men are accused of making an illegal agreement to pay fees for services rendered to a director of a listed company while it was being restructured. Wong also faces a separate charge accusing him of offering $15 million worth of share options for just $1.8 million to the same director in return for that person's participation in a corporate takeover Wong was involved. No plea was taken and the case was adjourned until next month. Principal Magistrate Bina Chan Rei extended the bail of the three men. Wang was granted bail for $1 million, while Yin and Cho were granted bail for $500,000 each. The pharmacy industry is planning to build an online platform which will list the prices of products for their customers. The move comes after a pharmacy in Causeway Bay was caught overcharging tourists. Vicky Wan reports. Speaking after a radio show, the Hong Kong General Chamber of Pharmacies Executive Committee member Zheng Dai Wing said an online platform set up by the chamber would enable customers to compare the prices of products sold in local pharmacies and even purchase them online. 
John added that the industry body will tighten up examination procedures of pharmacies who wish to join the chamber so that problematic drug stores cannot continue to scam customers even after they open a new shop. This comes after a drugstore in Causeway Bay was expelled from the chamber yesterday due to dishonest and unethical business practices. Last month, the drugstore was reported to have charged a mainland tourist nearly $40,000 for two bottles of medicated oil, which is usually sold at around $200 each. Although the visitor received a refund after intervention by the Consumer Council, the incident sparked concerns about whether mainland tourists were being ripped off and if there was a proper monitoring system of local pharmacies. The overpricing practice had also drawn criticisms from a mainland newspaper, saying it damaged Hong Kong's tourism image and the consumer confidence of visiting mainlanders. Vicky Wen, ATV News. Disgraced property tycoon Thomas Kwok appeared at the High Court this afternoon to hear instructions over his appeal of corruption charges. But first, in a local news roundup, renowned Cantonese opera master Lam Ka Singh has died at the age of 82. Lam Ka Singh passed out after dinner at his Kowloon Chong residence last night, according to his apprentice Stephen Chow. He was admitted to Kwong Wah Hospital but was certified dead soon after. Lam started learning Cantonese opera at the age of 11 and was the last disciple of opera maestro Sik Kok Sin. His career of film and stage performances made him a household name, earning countless accolades from both the colonial and SAL governments. Acting Chief Executive Carrie Lam has expressed her deep sorrow, praising Lam's great contribution to the conservation and development of Cantonese opera. A memorial will be held in Hong Kong on the 19th of this month. Disgraced property tycoon Thomas Kwok returned to the High Court in a prison van this afternoon as part of an appeal to overturn his corruption charges. Also appearing at the direction's hearing were former Sun Hong Kai Executive Director Thomas Chen and Stock Exchange official Francis Kwan. But former Chief Secretary Raphael Ho, the key figure in the corruption case, was absent. The Court of Appeal has instructed the defendants to submit written representations before the 18th of this month. The case, scheduled in November, is expected to last seven days. Just over two-thirds of applicants will be allocated two board lots of the fifth batch of the inflation-linked bonds the Monetary Authority announced today, while each of the record-high 597,895 subscribers will be allocated one unit. Only 402,105 will receive an extra lot to be decided by ballot. Financial Services Chief Chen Ka Kung said the overwhelming demand may have been the result of the public's better understanding of the program. $10 billion worth of I-bonds will be listed on the stock exchange this Friday. Overseas, the 10 members of ASEAN have gathered in Kuala Lumpur for their regional forum. All eyes were on the meeting between U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi as they discussed issues related to the disputed South China Sea. Scott Murphy reports. Security was tight and a few demonstrators protested U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry's appearance at the ASEAN Regional Forum in Kuala Lumpur. But it was all smiles when Kerry praised ASEAN members for the progress they were making and announced that the U.S. shared their interests. The United States shares the frequently expressed desire of ASEAN members to preserve the peace and stability in the South China Sea. We want to ensure the security of critical sea lanes and fishing grounds, and we want to see that disputes in the area are managed peacefully and on the basis of international law. After their hour-long meeting, which Kerry said was good, China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi echoed those sentiments. The atmosphere is very good and the meeting improved our natural understanding, Wang said. The U.S. reassured us that they welcome China's call for a peaceful resolution of the South China Sea issue through negotiations. Kerry also took time to meet with Turkey's foreign minister, while Australia's foreign minister claimed the country remained committed to the implementation of a UN resolution which would hold to account those responsible for the downing of Malaysian Airlines Flight 17. Scott Murphy, ATV News.
16 police officers were killed and two injured in a helicopter crash in bad weather in the U.S. But first, more than 20 people died after two trains derailed while crossing a river bridge in central India. Here's Scott Murphy. In India, two trains derailed just before midnight in the central state of Madhya Pradesh, killing at least 24 people and injuring 100 others. The trains were traveling in opposite directions and minutes apart when they each derailed while crossing what's believed to be a flooded bridge. So uh, the approach to the culvert, the track, it, it caved in because of the heavy rains and because of the wet soil, soft soil, which it became because of the rains, rainwater. So uh, it led to the derailment. Six coaches of uh, Kamaini Express got derailed. Similarly, on the other track, uh, the Janta Express was coming and one engine and four coaches of that train also got derailed. Divers using gas cutters rescued more than 300 people and are continuing the search for survivors. Monsoon rains in India have been responsible for the deaths of over 100 people across the country in the last several days. Two police officers who survived a helicopter crash in Colombia were rushed to hospital with serious injuries following a crash which killed 16 other officers. It's believed their Black Hawk helicopter, similar to this one seen here, slammed into a mountain in woody northwest Colombia. For now, said Colombia's defense minister, the most likely scenario is that the helicopter flew into a 120 knot velocity, which is about 180 kilometers an hour, possibly because of low clouds. The helicopter's remains were found completely scattered. Coming just a week after a Colombian plane crashed, killing 11 Air Force personnel, President Juan Manuel Santos urged people not to speculate that it was an attack. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed more than 10,000 Jewish participants across the U.S. in a live webcast and implored them not to support the proposed Iran nuclear deal. The most important point I have to make today is this. The nuclear deal with Iran doesn't block Iran's path to the bomb. To the bomb. It actually paves Iran's path to the bomb. Worse, it gives Iran two paths to the bomb. Iran can get to the bomb by keeping the deal, or Iran could get to the bomb by violating the deal. Netanyahu went on to make the case that with only a short-range statute of limitations, Iran could create an entire arsenal of weapons in a little over a decade. I don't oppose this deal because I want war. I oppose this deal because I want to prevent war. And this deal will bring war. It will spark a nuclear arms race in the region, and it would feed Iran's terrorism and aggression. That would make war, perhaps the most horrific war of all, far more likely. U.S. President Barack Obama, who celebrated his 54th birthday yesterday, also plans to meet privately with Jewish leaders this week to support the deal. Scott Murphy, ATV News.